Jacob, come and call on the Lord. I hear Jacob crying. Oh, I hear, I can hear him crying. When you're gonna run. The Bible. Is it hard to understand? 
when it comes to reading the Bible, the first thing that comes to mind is the fact that this is the Word of God. The seals have been broken, and the truth is here. And when we go throughout the scriptures, when we go throughout extra biblical records, we find that the language that God employed, that he used to create the heavens and the earth, was the Hebrew language. Christ said, I came for the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But yet no one, no religious leader, no religious church out there anywhere can now identify the 12 tribes of Israel. Can we? God is quite simple, but it seems as if man makes understanding him hard. What are those mysteries? The truth of your book. And the truth will make you free. The Hebrew and Bible Academy, you're invited. President Silva has disgraced the memory of six million Jews murdered by the Nazis. Welcome to the Frontline YouTube channel. Israel eventually launched calibrated retaliatory strikes against Iran. Israel launched an offensive against Iran in the early hours of Friday in what appeared to be a limited targeted retaliation for Tehran's drone and missile attack last weekend. Both sides' response to the attack was muted. This signaled that neither country wanted further tensions that risked triggering a full-scale regional conflict. However, the latest news shows that the situation has changed. Israel continues to hit Iranian bases. According to the latest information, successive explosions occurred at the Iranian base in Iraq. Huge explosion south of Baghdad at military base, Iraqi security source says. An explosion occurred at a military base in Iraq early on Saturday, causing a large fire. The Popular Mobilization Forces Department in Babel province, south of Baghdad, said that an airstrike had hit Kalsu base. Images on social media showed a large blaze at the site. Muhannad al -Anizzi, head of the Babel Provincial Security Committee, said in a statement that three soldiers had been wounded. There were at least five explosions, probably from drone strikes against Hashid al-Shabi sites, he said. The base reportedly houses PMU, Iraqi Army and Federal Police Forces. The PMF claimed the U.S. was behind the strike. U.S. Central Command did not immediately comment. The U.S. conducted a series of strikes on targets in Iraq and Syria following attacks on American troops in the region. But there have been no attacks on U.S. troops since early February, so a sudden strike that would break that relative calm appeared, on its face, to be an unlikely escalation. The reported airstrike comes as Iraqi Prime Minister Mohammed Shia al-Sudani is concluding a visit to Washington during which he discussed plans for the withdrawal of U.S. and allied troops from the country. Tehran downplayed reported Israeli attacks and signaled no retaliation. Sources said explosions echoed through an Iraqi city on Friday, indicating an Israeli attack. But Tehran downplayed the incident and said it had no plans to retaliate. This was a seemingly measured response to prevent a region-wide war. Shalom, brothers and sisters. We're the elders of the Gathering of Christ Church here with our weekly Sabbath lesson. And as you all can see, the saga continues. Iran, the beginning of the end, is the title of this particular lesson. Get your pen and pads ready so we can give you the true narrative of what's going on in the Middle East according to God, according to God the Bible. You got it? Please hit the like button. Elder Lawyer is back. My brother. Yes, sir. From the same mother. 
Isaac and Rebecca. You know how it is. Jacob. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yes, we are about to embark on a new three months of your Hebrew and Bible Academy. And in the midst of everything going on, you should be there tomorrow. Okay. I'm going to jump right into it so that brothers and sisters can understand the heavenly dynamic according to prophecy when it comes to what's happening geopolitically in the earth. If you don't have the most high's perspective according to the Bible, what you need? Okay, I got some pens for you. Hold on. If you don't have the most high's perspective according to the Bible, all right? I have a bunch of them here then most people would probably panic, lose their stuff, and begin to run around screaming, uh, the sky's falling, please, what's going on? And if you are operating like that out of fear, you don't understand what's going on. Or if you are a little afraid, because we will go through Jacob's trouble, settle down, get a pen and pad, and follow the word of God. Okay. It makes it uh, an easier task to get through, even though we're going through Jacob's trouble, right? It makes it an easier task to understand the dynamics of why these wars must ensue. And you must have the proper narrative according to the Bible. For years, we've been, we've been misdirected by false theology controlled on either side, okay? Whether it be Christianity, Islam, or whether it be Judaism, right? And I'm gonna go into that today, right? Straight, I'm gonna tell you, straight deflection. Deflecting from the true narrative to why the Gentiles have gone mad and have begun to turn on one another, right? Because at one point, all Gentiles were in, right? All of them were in a singular mind against the lost tribes of Israel. But why are they now attacking one another? And when I say Gentiles, I mean Gentiles, okay? That's a Gentile war over there. Non-Israelite war. A matter of fact, some new details have come out, right? I showed Putin earlier. Hence the reason why. Let me show you. Let me show you here if I can. I'll get there in a moment. Let me put it here real quick. One second here. Let me get it here. One moment. Right here. President Silva. Yeah, right there. Good. I was saying that there's a reason that they won't allow DNA testing in the state, in the new state of Israel. Okay. DNA testing isn't permitted. Like we would get normally here in the United States or in the Western world. Right. You have to go through a lot to actually get a DNA test in Israel. Why? Because questions has arise concerning whether or not the people that are over there are European under a religion of Judaism instead of the physical children of Israel. And that means everything because if you're not the physical people, then the narrative that's been sold to the world through Christian theology and others must now be, get resolved. Because the world was behind Israel because we thought these people were the bloodline of Abraham, Isaac, and or Jacob. Come to find out, they did a, uh, Putin's son did a DNA test in Europe, right? Putin's son. He didn't do it in Israel, he did it in Europe. And his blood came back, right? The test came back that he was 100% Polish, European Polish, Eastern European. 
So now we must deal with the narrative. Okay. That's fine. We must now examine the narrative of what's going on according to God, opposed to what we've been told. Hollywood mainstream media has worked in collusion with the Catholic Church to teach a false narrative that would have Esau in the land of Israel fighting this war for a specific purpose. What is that purpose? <laughs> You're about to find out. Iran, the beginning of the end. And folks, I'm moving Biden out of the way. I'm moving today Putin out of the way, the Iranian president out of the way. And what we're going to look at this is from a geopolitical standpoint, according to God, with the true prophetic understanding of our current war. Okay. Now, before I go into that, I would first let's do some uh, some announcements. Tomorrow begin our next Hebrew and Bible Academy, April twenty first. Okay. Tomorrow, I hope to see you there. The theme is Jacob's trouble. How to make it through Jacob's trouble? We'll have lessons preparation videos and all that to give insight on how our people must make it through not just physical preparation but also spiritual preparation okay because it doesn't matter to some degree how much we prepare physically it does matter because it sustains us on a daily basis but one day we may have to walk away from everything we've prepped okay so yes, preparation is important, but one day we're going to have to just walk away from it all to save ourselves alive and prep ourself, ourselves alive to make it to the next phase in Jacob's trouble. Mm -hmm. Right? So those who have received, you have to be as if you receive nothing and understand everything you're blessed with currently is a daily blessing. And to know the same God that have helped us accumulate everything that we currently possess. Possesses the universe. Mm -hmm. So it's going to take a level of faith for people to walk away and say, look at all this beautiful stuff that we got. Oh, my God. Let me tell you how many of us believe that the most High would have given us anything we've received so far. Right. But yet. He fulfilled his oath with those who love him and his son. And one thing about things, brothers and sisters, you can get things anywhere. <laughs> things are all over the earth. We are more important than things. So yes, enjoy what you can, right? In measure, but understand one day you'll have to walk away. And we're going to talk about how to Walk away without feeling anything and knowing that the Most High can provide on the other side. It's the same faith that led us out of Egypt into the wilderness, over Jordan, into the land of Israel. Okay? What will, what will, will we be embarking on? Identifying the Gentile nations. Who are these people showing up in our neighborhoods? What do they believe? Who are their fathers? You're going to find out that, that, that them sending people into our neighborhoods isn't just a financial thing, a financial warfare or fiscal warfare against us. It's a spiritual warfare. These people are coming over into our areas with all types of ancient religious ideologies and are warring spiritually against our people. And unfortunately, the Christian church is losing because they don't even understand they're in a war. When you have a bunch of Asians coming amongst you who, who believe in, in the dragon, when you have a bunch of uh, 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 East Indians coming, coming in your neighborhoods, not understanding 
what type of ritualistic connections they have in their country. Spiritual warfare. So these people aren't coming over here just to set up a kebab shop. They bring a religion with them. Okay? So we must identify the Gentile nations. <laughs> lawyer. <laughs> lawyer. That they gave lawyer a little chuckle there. Okay? So we must identify these people. I'm already working on it. Mm -hmm. Right? I'm, man, I'm going in. I got so many records in front of me. I'm, I'm out of order. Books, all types of stuff. But don't worry about it. Identifying the Gentile nations. I'm going to also go into the Moody Handbook of Theology. Right? <clears throat> if y'all can see that. Because I'm going into this book. I had to get this book. I had it before I left, but I had to get another one. To show you how the Vatican end up tricking people into believing into, into spiritual Israelites which justify these people over there in, in the war against Iran right now. They did it through convincing us in, who believed in Christ and in, in, who believed in Christ. Right? That's right. They convinced us that they were the people with the replacement theology taught in the Christian church that had nothing to do with the true doctrine that Christ left the disciples. They tricked us into backing these people as the children of God. And they even put it in a book and told you how they did it. <laughs> right? So when I go into identifying the Gentile nations, I'm also going to go into how the Vatican tricked everyone into some kumbaya doctrine of spiritual Israelites and that it doesn't matter who you are on the earth anymore, which is a lie from the pit of hell. It was a doctrine that was created by the Jesuits to justify another people as Gentiles claiming at the very end to be God's people. And these are the people who are in a war against Iran presently. So they weren't just working on the Judaism side. Christianity has been infiltrated. And they've been, they, they began to teach a Zionist ideology within Christianity and started peddling that into our neighborhood so that we can support what? Unjust wars in the earth. And I'm so glad our people have begun to wake up, folks. For the first time since, <laughs> since we were in captivity or under the hands or powers of the Gentiles. For the first time, it doesn't matter what you believe, what you don't believe, whether you go to church or whatever the case is, it seems that something is going on with our people that they're all saying, well, you know what? We've given up supporting everyone else. All together, our people like a switch went on. Like, you know what? Our people are suffering, but every time there's something going on with other people, they're now jockeying for our support. When no one supports us being stomped in the ground. And all of a sudden, our people are all together say, you know what? I'm not in it. For the first time, our people that begin to look out for ourselves and say, you know what? Not that I care less about other people, but self-preservation is paramount. Mm -hmm. How much, we must preserve ourselves alive before supporting you. Right. So we got to ident identify these wolves in sheep's clothing coming in our neighborhoods. Okay. Identifying the Gentile nations, the final battle between Esau and Jacob, right? We must identify this battle because we're still in this battle, a battle Christ will finish. The truth about Mecca, the satanic rituals at the Kaaba stone. Okay, that Kaaba stone isn't just a rock, folks. It's not just a rock. There's rituals in that area, a portal in that area that was set up not by the Arabs alone, but also Rome, the Vatican. They're working together, opening up portals to connect with the dark side. Ishmael and Esau is in, that's right, they're in cahoots together. The satanic rituals at the Kaaba stone. Islam isn't what we thought it was. How Christ will guide us through Jacob's trouble. 
He's guiding us now, believe it or not, through the Holy Spirit. He's guiding us. He gives us insight on what to say, what to preach, what to teach, what to do. Insight on the true intentions of the Gentiles against God's people. Enduring through the seven trumps. We're going into the book of Revelation for the first time. The seven trumps, breaking it down through precept in the Hebrew and Bible Academy. And the dark side of Islam. All of that and more in the academy. And for the first time, I'm going back. Let me show you before I go into the lesson. Right? I got some stuff to share. We're going to go back into our lesson, Color and the Bible. And I'm going through the Russian icons that was gifted me years ago. Instead of Putin opening up the vault, we're going to open up the vault and show you what they've been hiding in the Russian vaults. Every picture. The original pictures before the Renaissance period began to whitewash the images of Christ and the disciples and God's people. Mary, Christ, the disciples, Peter, okay, and others. We're all black people. They put it in a vault. Okay, so everybody talk about the Putin reveal. <laughs> hey, guess what, folks? I'm going to tell you. We've been talking about this since the early 90s. Now, what's make this relevant is because Putin is willing to put this out there now. Because why? To tell others that the war in the Middle East is unjust because it's not a war theologically sound when it comes to God's people fighting for the land. He put it out there to say the real people are suffering are the people that, that have been oppressed by either side of the war that's fighting right now. Right? He's like, listen, we can't support this theologically through our churches no more because they were never the people. Color in the Bible. How did the invisible man turn into Jacob? Huh? I'm going to go into that and I'm going to go into this. All the original pictures. All the original pictures showing what? Black icons. We're going to, we're going to take our time with this. We're going to go 15, 20 minutes, just straight pictures from the Russian icons. Also, what, I, what else I'm going to break out when we go into color in the Bible? Well, I got the original information off, off of the Middle Kingdoms, the papyrus papers which were actually placed in the British Museum, right? A papyrus of the late Middle Kingdom in the Brooklyn Museum, the, the Middle Kingdom of Egypt, where on the papyrus papers, the servants and all of that were recording all of the plagues that was happening to their families during the time our God began to plague Upper Egypt. They kept the record and put it on papyrus. Every plague, one by one in chronicle, chronological order, is in this book off of the Egyptians' papyrus to prove the curses that the Most High brought by through Moses are archaeologically sound. But what the enemy did, he switched the time period of when it happened in current history. So to make everyone believe it could not have happened because in this time period, we don't have no proof of this. But we're going to set the record straight. On papyrus papers, it shows every plague one by one that happened while our people were in Egypt, Goshen. I have it right here from the British Museum. You see this? This thing is old as dirt. Okay, here it is right here. I got it. See, see, the man of sin can no longer hide anymore. So I'm going I'm to make sure I put these, make sure I have these ready to go when we go into, because we can't talk about Jacob without doing what? Chronologically giving you insight on how Jacob from the beginning got from royalty, riches, power, to where we are today. So when I go into color in the Bible, we must track Jacob from the, the children of Israel from the beginning, starting with coming out of Egypt, okay? 
Now, go to historytimes.org. Not right now, but afterwards, to enroll. All right, Elder Lawyer, let's go. Yes, sir. There's a war over there between <clears throat> Iran and Israel. Now, now usually, of course, I'm going to be going into this, right? I'm going to be going into this in the academy, right? But I wanted to show this real quick. All right? One second, let me get it here. In order to understand uh, the war in the Middle East, we must first break down the characters or the nations or the ancient name of the nations to understand geopolitically what's happening today in prophecy, right? So we're going to start off with identifying Iran, right? Now, before I go there, Elder Lloyd, yeah, matter of fact, let's do that in the Bible first. Let's go to Genesis 10. Let's identify Iran. So why are, why is there a war now against Iran? Right? So we <laughs> must first start off by identifying Iran. Right? And brothers and sisters, this will give you an insight to how to break down the nations of the earth. We're going to use Genesis 10. And I'm going to show you even though we're going to break down all nations, here's an example of how we're going to show you, well, a small example of how we're going to show you this in the Bible, in the, in the Hebrew and Bible Academy, okay? Now, when you go to Genesis 10, if you can read that, Elder Lawyer. Yes, sir. Genesis 10 and 1. Read. Now, these are the generations of the sons of Noah, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Shem, Ham, and Japheth. You all know the story. Noah escaped or was saved on an ark. Noah, his wife, their, his, his three sons and their wives preserved life alive. Shem would be predominantly the family that they would, call, they would claim in the Middle East. Okay. Ham would be predominantly North Africa, not all of Africa, strictly North Africa. The Egyptians... Uh, the Ethiopians who are Cushites, the original ones, uh, the Canaanites uh, in Mizraim, which are Egyptians. So when you look at uh, the Africa we see today, that wasn't the land of Ham. Only North Africa is the land of Ham. OK, and Japheth. Japheth would be considered Asian. OK, Asian and or in some instances, Indian, okay? Asians and Indians, all right? Read. And unto them were sons born after the flood. After the flood, read. The sons of Japheth. The sons of Japheth. Gomer. Gomer. And Magog. Magog. And Madai. And Madai. Now, when you go into the breakdown of this, and I'll do more when it comes to Magog, Magog is China. Parts of Russia and China initially were the Asians until Alexander the Greek in the fourth century began to war against them and push them further east. Right? But we're going to concentrate on Mada here. Right? When you go, uh, let me go here real, real quick and get the, here's a lesson for you. Let's get Madai right here. Let's get Madai in the Hebrew. Elder Loi, I know you're going to be doing Hebrew tomorrow, but if you can say that in the ancient, what is it? Madai. Madai. Ma-da. And what's the last letter there? Yah. Yah. Madai. And who is this? Look, look at what it says here, if you will. 
Okay. I'll move this so that you all can see it. Right. Madai. A country of Central Asia, Madai, Medes or Media. Now, for those who are in the academy who have learned uh, as we went through, through the lesson, the four beasts of Daniel, you'll realize the bear stands on two separate legs. Well, one leg is Japheth and the other leg is one of the sons of Shem, Elam. These two would make up the modern day Iran. The modern day I ran. So let's do this real quick. We're going to compare two maps, right? We're going to compare two maps here. And as you can see, let me pull it up here. After the Persian Gulf, you have where? Here's the Persian Gulf where they're warring at. And we have Madai. See that? Madai or the Midians. Mm -hmm. And then you have right here, Persia. So the land of Persia was initially given to who? You got Madai here, which are the sons of a Japheth nation. A Japheth nation out of Jephat, right? And then you would have, right, as you can go through here, let me show you. You have the Persians right here, down here, who are Elam and the Medes, two separate nations that began what we call Iran, right? Off of the Persian Gulf, you had the Elamites, and here you would have the Japhites, Mada. See that? Now, these are the type of lessons you can get in detail, right? In the academy also, right? As you can see, Magog is up here, which links into Russia, but a lot of these were connected to Asians who were pushed out into China, right? push into China during the wars of Alexander's generals, right? Now, why am I showing you this? Well, you good, other lawyer? Yes, sir. Oh, yeah. Right? Let's go here real quick before we go there. Now, if you can see right here now, here's your current day map, right? Look at it. And as you can see, Here's the Persian Gulf, right? The Persians were here, as you remember, right? And you had what? With Tehran and all these other areas where Madai was on your current map. So you compare the ancient maps to the current maps to see the families who were, who were really in place since Noah. These people were there since the settling, settling of the nations after the flood. That means these people have been in place before those who were actually warring against them. Okay? Right? Here's the Strait of Hormuz right here. In the same area of what? Persia. And up here would be the Medes, two empires, Japheth and Shem, ruling together in a land God gave them under Noah since the to ancient times of the flood. Y'all see that? Y'all see that? Someone says a catamite forever. <laughs> right? You have something, other lawyer? You good? Yes, I'm good. So I wanted to give y'all some the insight of the area they're warring in. Now, why are 
why are the Europeans seeking to misplace these people like they like they're doing the Palestinians. I'm going to show you. And this is why uh, these people over there, these Europeans, had to trick us through theology and believing that they have a holy prophetic right to the land. They had to trick us into believing this. But why are they over there warring? Well, because of a prophetic promise. So let's go into that promise real quick, if you will, Elder Lawyer, in the book of Genesis, and we'll go to the 15th verse. We'll go to the 15th verse, right? Hold on. Before I go there, let me get uh, that landmass queued up, if you will. Right? I got that. Thank you. So let's go. So why are they strategically taking out different regions? Why did they go into Iraq under George Bush? Why did they destroy parts of Libya? Why are now they're turning around? Why did they cause a civil disruption in parts of Egypt? Near Cairo. Right? <laughs> and now why is they're now turning their sights after staking claim to all these areas that they've created civil unrest through? Why are now they're setting their sights on Iran? Here's why. Elder Lawyer, let's go into the Bible here. Yes, sir. Genesis 15, get your Bible together. This is the Bible study for you now. So that y'all can't think this is our this is the gathering of Christ churches. Uh, interpretation. What justify the Israelis warring for certain territories in the quote unquote Middle East? Now, there's a clear distinction for those who don't know who may be fairly new here. Don't be fooled. There's a clear distinction between an Israeli and an Israelite. Right? An Israeli is a citizen of Israel. It doesn't matter what ethnicity you are. If you are black, white, Chinese, and you're living in Israel, you are a citizen of Israel. It doesn't mean you're an Israelite. You become an Israeli. The same way your nationality in the United States, even though there's different nationalities, if you are a citizen, you are a citizen of the United States. So most people get that confused because Israeli sounds quite similar to Israelites in the Bible. And that's a trick thing there where our people look at it and be like, well, Israeli, this must, the Bible must be talking about these people. See? No, there's a clear difference. An Israelite, you must be from the physical bloodline of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Period. Quite that simple. And either side over there that are fighting over that land are not from those well, at least not from two of those. I mean, one of those. Okay. I can't say Esau isn't from Abraham because he is. I can't say he isn't from Isaac because he is. He's definitely not from Jacob. He's just tricked everyone in our current time to believe he's Jacob. The invisible man. So now let's go to the promises of of Abraham to realize and understand why Esau would be fighting over a land that was promised to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Let's read it. Yes, sir. Genesis 15 and verse 18. Genesis 15, verse 18. And in particular, I wanted lawyer to go here because we're dealing with what? Territory here where God would promise Abraham territory mm -hmm. for his promised children. So now geographically, we have to understand, okay, what areas, what real estate was actually promised to the chosen people? While they over here got us talking about spiritual Israelites and being Israelites through believing in Christ only, 
They're getting physical territory that was promised prophetically out of Torah. Right? See, and the reason why they want us to become spiritual Israelites, spiritually, you get nothing physical. <laughs> So they'll let you they'll, they'll let you jockey for a pie in the sky while they're physically out there losing lives and putting their lives on the line to get a land that was promised. You see the trick bag there? See that? That's what they'll do. They'll have us looking for a pie in the sky because if you're spiritual, then they say, well, listen, the land you get is a spiritual land out of your imagination while we, as God's people, will take the physical land promised to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. See? So in order for them to trick us into that, they had to make us believe that we were from an entirely different family altogether, even though we're the children of Israel. Right? You got it? So now, let's read the territory real quick, if you will. Yes, sir. Genesis 15, verse number 18. And the same day the Lord made a covenant with Abram, saying, Unto thy seed have I given this land from the river of Egypt. From the river of Egypt. Unto the great river. Unto the great river. The river Euphrates. The river Euphrates. Right? Now, this is the territory since our father Abraham that was promised to his children, Abraham, Isaac, and or Jacob. Now, Ishmael has a problem, the Arabs, because Ishmael was the firstborn of Abram through an Egyptian Hagar, Hagar, and filled their double cross because the Most High said, well, no, Hagar will not be the child. The promised seed. I'm going to give this to a son, Isaac, that you have at the same time next year. So all this territory right here, Hagar thought being an Egyptian. Having a child with the promised man, Abraham, that her child would stake claim to all of this territory. But no, the Most High said in Genesis 17, I will not give it to Hagar's son. It will be through Sarah, a free woman. So now the Arabs, the Ishmaelites of Saudi Arabia, who came out through Sarah and Abraham, has an axe to grind because they believe they have access to the land. And they've been double crossed by our people. So that's your Arabs. And then you have Esau later. When Jacob and Esau was battling in the womb, they were battling for this territory. Two rulers battling in the womb for one rulership, the earth. See? So when Esau lost his, sold his birthright, no one stole anything from him, and lost a blessing, him and his children conspired in the earth to circumvent the promise, to take it from their brother. And the, in order to take it from the brother, you must institute a system of sin directed towards Jacob. And by doing so, our God stays at war against us while they do an end around to take the land they think was stolen from them. See? <laughs> Are you getting it here? Now, read that again, 18. Yes, sir. Genesis 15, verse 18. And the same day the Lord made a covenant with Abram, saying, Unto thy seed have I given this land from the river of Egypt unto the great river, the river Euphrates. Now, let's talk about that. Now, this is what, what, what chaps the Ishmaelites because they see this and they be like, Well, hold up. Our father was the firstborn. Al Akbar. Ishmael should have been the sacrifice. Ramadan. <laughs> no. When God makes a covenant, God makes a covenant. And he's not a man that he should lie not. If he made a covenant with Abraham for a specific people, it doesn't matter how you feel about it. 
you must comply. So the United Emirate is in collusion with the Vatican in Europe in the Middle East right now. Because they both feel that at the end of it, they'll just break bread together. But what Ishmael don't know is Esau don't have no plans in sharing that with you either. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. He's just dealing with his current obstacle before he do an end around on you. Like you see the double cross, their symbol. They're known for double crossing. So they'll use the United Emirates as long as the United Emirates think that they can get something. But at the end of the day, Esau is going to try to take you out too. Ishmael. Now, let's deal with that territory from, to give you a visual, to give us all a visual of the land that Esau would seek to get and why they're fighting. I have what right here, hold on, let me get it right here. I have right here, an actual map from Google Maps, the current area that they're warring at right now. I need y'all to check this out. Here's a current map, right? Look at it. And I look, I need y'all to see all four current points. The same area that was promised to Abraham in Genesis 15. One, two, three, four points. Currently. What do we have here? We have Syria. We have Lebanon. We have Israel, we have Jordan, we have Iraq, right? All the areas that they took over, Iraq and all that, right? But they have one obstacle, Iran. Iran have an allegiance with all these different countries as their protector, as being one of the original settlers on that land, since the flood. Y'all see this? So as you can see geopolitically, right here is all the lands. So they're not really thinking about just taking Gaza. They're warring to get all of that land that they deem belongs to them through the promises of of Abraham. And I need y'all to understand this geopolitically. Y'all see this? What did I do? In a nutshell, I show you what I did right here. I went and got an original map of the promises of Abraham and all the points they're seeking to steal in the name of Jacob. That's all. Now, this is where it gets deep, <laughs> all right? And what I'm doing is, I'm doing this from a layman's understanding. I can be well more detailed with more information and resources, but I'm making it simple so that the, even the, you know, a person who never studied geography or history at all can understand the reason they're over there, okay? To have you understand that. Now, what happens is, and I need you to go where it says, they shall run in the kid them. In the book of Isaiah, you, Ezekiel, you got that? I'll grab it if you don't have it, mm -hmm. right? What's going on, what they're not telling the people, folks, is that this is where the six million burnt sacrifice we keep hearing over and over again will ensue. This will be a sacrifice, sacrifice to Moloch, the burnt sacrifice, when Iran launches on all of these regions right here. The leaders like Netanyahu and others are going to run right back into Europe or Kittim 
according to prophecy because they are provoking Iran so that Iran can actually rid the area through fire and cleanse it so that they can do an end around to get the land later with Iran helping them blast all of the area. So the provocation <clears throat> is intentional. The provocation isn't so that they can actually rule from Israel, but to provoke a war in which all of this area is wiped off, you know, all together with one hit. So all of these areas, parts of Iraq, Jordan, Lebanon, Syria, and even Israel itself will be on fire. Everything you see within this, according to prophecy, must get scorched. All of this. Now, it's our people who will be in the outer skirts of the land who will make it through. Or those that are on the borders of these areas will run out into the plains so to survive the carnage. Parts of Egypt too in the Cairo area. It's a cleansing. So this is not for them just to get the land. They must provoke the war to speed up the prophecies because once the, once the areas are leveled, they can come back in their mind to rebuild what was promised them. So if they provoke it with Iran, it'll help them speed up time. They can actually get it quicker to rebuild it later. Mm -hmm. See? So they have every intentions intention on provoking a war so that they can now use their finances to actually rebuild it after Iran helps them level it. If Iran helps them now, you can't blame who? Israel for all the destruction and genocide that's, that, that are being promoted and talked about concerning Palestinians. Right? Are you following me here? Let me show y'all something. Right now, Israel is getting some serious negative press. That's really slowing up their plan to get the area. Because you must have a moral high ground to justify taking people out or taking out nations according to the international treaties. So they need Iran in the war. Why? Let me show you. They need Iran in the war because why? In 1948, the Palestinians had all of this. And the source we have here is from Al Jazeera. This is how much territory the Palestinians had before 1948 or Hitler. But then when there were, then there was a Jewish state by 1970, it looked like this. <laughs> look. See? Look, look. Then it's shrinking. And now after the hits we just seen a few weeks ago, it's way less than what you see right here. So right now, Israel is getting too much negative press. So, that, so now they must do what? They must switch it up now and say, well, okay, let's provoke this war with Iran and they'll help wipe out the rest of it. And now the negative press goes on Iran opposed to us while they run into Kittim in Europe and hide knowing that they're provoking a war that cannot be won from Israel alone. Impossibility. See? So I'm, I'm putting this out there so that you all don't get caught up to not realizing, to not realizing what's really going on prophetically, right? Ishmael lost the blessing and Esau lost the blessing. So they both are in cahoots, the United Emirates, as well as the Vatican to, 
to destabilize the Middle East so that they can get what was promised. And at the same time, they both must keep the children of Israel, the lost sheep of Israel at bay. Hence the reason every time our people begin to wake up and operate on our own, they start sending these people, these strangers over amongst us to keep us at bay or to misdirect us while they seek to run with the promise and at the same time use the, the healthcare system and everything to exterminate the children of Israel. Right? So I just wanted to give y'all an insight geopolitically what's going on because Esau lost the birthright. Right? Esau, a matter of fact, let's get that real quick, Elder Lawyer, in Genesis. Genesis, uh, 27. yeah, 27. Let's get that. Let's, let's go to where Esau went out. to. Now, we know he sold his birthright. No one stole anything from him. Right? No one stole anything. So let, let's go straight to it, where his father sends him out. Let's go straight to it when he come into the house and Jacob already have received the promises. Let's get straight there. Yes, sir. Genesis 27 and 30. Genesis 27 and 30, while Esau right now is over there, you know, creating havoc in that land to take it, to get it for, for itself. While he over here teaching the children of Israel, our people, that uh, it's spiritual Israelites. <laughs> well, if it's spiritual Israelites, why are you fighting for the same territory and the borders that were promised to Abraham. Mm -hmm. Huh? Now think about that for a second. So this thing is deeper than just some spiritual thing. Right? It's something physical with this. It's called land. Right? And we're going to get that out of, through Christ real quick. And hey, do me a favor. Can y'all hit the like button? Help us out with that. We're up almost 3,000, but I'm going to show you what happens with this Iran thing in a moment. But other lawyer, let, let's get Esau's mindset, right? Yes, sir. Genesis 27 and 30. 27 verse 30 out of your King James Version Bible, right? Let's read it. And it came to pass as soon as Isaac had made an end of blessing Jacob... And Jacob was yet scarce going out from the presence of Isaac, his father, that Esau, his brother, came in from his hunting. So our father Jacob received not just the, the birthright, but the blessing. Mm -hmm. Esau sold his birthright, so he had no right going to his father at his deathbed to ask for the blessing. He was trying to do what? Use a technicality to get back what he already sold. So he didn't care about giving the blessing or the birthright to, to Jacob because he knew that he had another scenario in place in which he can get it later. See? But no, once he made an oath, that was before God. You can't have the birthright and not get the blessing. And that's why the Most High had him out there chasing something that he couldn't find while our father received that land. And guess what, folks? Under Christ, those who are in Christ will receive that land. I'm going to tell you that right now. It's been written in the heavens. That land belongs to us. So Esau, his brother, came in from the house and he began hunting. Read. 31. And he had also made savory meat and brought it unto his father and said unto his father, Let my father arise. And eat of his son's venison, that thy soul may bless me. Come on. And Isaac his father said unto him, Who art thou? And he said, I am thy son, thy firstborn son. And Isaac trembled very exceedingly and said, Who? Who? Where is he that have taken venison and brought it me, and I have eaten all before thou camest, and have blessed him? Yea, and he shall be blessed. And he shall be blessed. Come on. And when he saw her the words of his father, he cried with a great and exceeding bitter cry and said unto his father. So Esau started bawling. Go on. Bless me, even me also. Can you give me something, father? Anything. 
Read. O my father, and he said, Thy brother came with subtlety and have taken away thy blessing. And he said, Is not he rightly named Jacob? Yaiquab, supplanta. Read. For he hath supplanted me these two times. He took away my birthright, and behold, now he hath taken away my blessing. And he said, Hast thou not reserved a blessing for me? And this is why there's so much racial tension and resentment against us. We never realize we're not harming anyone, but it seems like we become everyone's business. Why? Our people better wake up. We run around saying, I don't understand why everyone don't like me. Why we seem like it's systematic. We're pressed to the bottom. You are God's chosen people. And in your bloodline is a promise and a covenant with God that the Gentiles know that if you walk righteous, the most high God will place you above all people. So it's not what you're doing currently. What threatens them is the, is your existence. What threatens them is what runs through your blood, your, your bloodstream. The blood of your father, Jacob, threatens them. Because you may stay ignorant, but the Gentiles know one of your children may wake up and take hold to this covenant. Even if you're ignorant, they fear one of your sons and daughters will wake up and say, you know what? I don't care what you're talking about, dad. Oh, mom, I read this Bible and we're the people. So even though you think, well, I'm doing all the right thing. I go to church and I do all this and that and the other. Right. I'm going to tell you, you think it in your mind. Well, why are people? I'm a good person. Why am I getting oppressed? Because they fear. They fear not just you. They fear the future of your family, your children taking hold of this covenant. See? So Esau says, can I get something? Mm -hmm. Anything for me? Read. 37. And Isaac answered and said unto Esau, Behold, I have made him thy Lord, and all his brethren have I given to him for service. Listen to what our father Isaac told him. I've made him your Lord. Mm -hmm. And all of the people that come out of you will serve Jacob. Now imagine him being the firstborn, the vitriol, the anger that he would, he would have towards not just Jacob, but Jacob's children. Isaac could not roll back the prophecy because even before Isaac, it was told Rebekah, Hey, when the children were battling in the womb for that same land, I showed you the elder shall serve the younger. So Isaac couldn't roll back the prophecy either, either. It was fate. See? So now Esau is running around the earth with an attitude. Right? Gloves off now. Read. And Isaac answered and said unto Esau, behold, I have made him thy Lord, and all his brethren have I given to him for servants. And with corn and wine have I sustained him. That means all the resources of the earth. Read. And what shall I do now unto thee, my son? He says, and what can I do for you, Esau? There's nothing less left to give. Mm. And folks, if Isaac could have given it to Esau, he would have. He knew that this power was beyond him. That means it was confirmed in his spirit, confirmed by the Almighty, that the right son received it. See? If he could have, he could have said, well, hold up, let me, let me do a, uh, let me do a redo. Something was in Isaac that confirmed his choice beyond his control was the will of God. See? See? Come on. 38. And Esau said unto his father, Has thou but one blessing, my father? You have something for me? Read. Bless me, even me also, O my father. Come on. And Esau lifted up his voice and wept. And Isaac his father answered and said unto him, Behold, thy dwelling shall be the fatness of the earth and of the dew of heaven from above. And by thy sword shalt thou live. And by thy sword 
thou shalt live, son. All the land have already been divided geographically along the lines of Ham, Shem, and Japheth. There's only one chosen land, and I've had two sons. You must live in the mountains. There's no land for you. Now check that out. The land can only be for one son. But I'll tell you what. You shall live by the sword, which means if you get any territory ge geographically on earth, you're going to have to war, kill, steal, and colonize to get it. Mm -hmm. So you're not just getting land strictly off a of blessing. You must war through the sword to get land. Is it now making sense to you folks? The Palestinian war? The war against Iran? Because if the land was promised to you and you've been there since the, the ark settled, there's no need to fight over land. <laughs> right? Right there. You don't have to fight over the land. Because the land is promised to you. And folks, guess what? Scientists even figured this out. The earth expands to nourish her children. So the more children, there's no such thing as scarcity and all that, that they're saying. The more people on the earth, the earth expands to feed her children. So there's no need if, if Esau had land to have to colonize and go into other lands. The reason why he had to do so is because he wasn't given any land. You had the land that was promised. To only one child, but yet two children were in the in the belly of Rebecca. This is why his original abode was in the mountains. So the Bible states, and by the sword shalt thou live, read, and shalt serve thy brother, and it shall come to pass when thou shalt have the dominion. So it also, so here it is. Isaac is also showing that eventually. Esau would have some time to rule in the earth. We're in those times now. When you gain the dominion, read. That thou shalt break his yoke from off thy neck. What is breaking the yoke off thy neck? The prophecy of having to serve his brother Jacob. How could that be so? Jacob must sin against the law that was given. Through Moses. If I can get Jacob to break the oath, I'll receive the dominion and, and I'll bring in a new world order to actually take the earth that we are entitled to. But Esau would be against a race, a race of time. He's racing against time. See? Because he would have a finite time to get everything but he would have to exterminate Jacob in the midst of it altogether in order to stave off the prophecy. So he's fighting on every front Esau is to sustain power, understanding the prophecy that was given through our God. Yeah, yeah, is this making sense to you all? See? If they were the people, they wouldn't have to have missiles and bombs and all that to get the land. They wouldn't need none of that. Our forefathers coming out of Egypt, we just screamed and walked around the wall of Jericho seven times. And guess what? All the walls fell down on the Canaanites and we walked into the land without violence. <laughs> Are you following me here? See? So now, see, see Geo, oh, y'all doing a great job. Oh, we're at 2,900, but we still about 1,000 likes down. Come on, because I'm going in today, folks. I'm going to need your help. I'm going to need your help here. Right? So we're going to break it down for you. All right? Breaking it down for you. 
Now you see why the Arabs are working with Esau, right? They've always been working together. Don't, don't ever deal with the narrative they give you on the news about jihadists and all this other stuff. It's good cop, bad cop. Esau and Ishmael. See? They've all been working together. Esau would be like, well, okay. You Christians, you black Christians, we it was it was white Christians who enslaved you. They'll put that out there. Right? And then our people will start saying, well, let's get away from the book because the book is a white man's book. That was a plan <laughs> to get you out of the only word that could identify the oppressors. The only book that would show forth a way to overcome the oppressors and take hold to a covenant. Only for us to run to Ishmael and be lied to by telling us that, that Islam was the black man's religion. They were playing either side the whole time, confusing us here in America. Ishmael and Esau. They were always work. And then they'd be like, well, okay, jihadi and all this stuff, right? And, and, and Ishmael would say, well, okay, you can make us the bad guy real quick. You can call us terrorists. So they'll play that out in Hollywood only to put some religious extremist things on the books so that when the Israelites begin to understand themselves, they'll use those laws, not on Arabs, but against the children of Israel who know they're Israelites. Esau and Ishmael have always worked in tandem, focusing on our people. With, with the no talented East Indians on the fringe, just trying to get in where they can fit in. Okay. <laughs> That's how they work. Okay, you're talking about no talent. Like the most I said, listen, we, I'm not giving y'all, listen, you, listen, go make a circuit board. Mm. <laughs> okay. Or, or go scam your cousin or something. I'm going to tell you, I'm talking about the most I said, he said, I'm going to take all of the spirit and give it to Jacob. And I can see the East Indians up there talking about, can I have, can I have a little some? <laughs> no. Okay. You go down and put some screws in a computer or something. Mm. Right? All these nations have conspired against us, pressing up on, on our people. Right? So now let's go in real quick. <clears throat> let's go in. Elder Lawyer, I need you to get Luke 2 and 68 for me real quick. Right? Huh? 1 and 68, yeah. Because now we have to bring Christ into this. Right. And I also need to go where their king should run into Kittim. Is that in Ezekiel? Hold on. Let's get this real quick. <clears throat> We're going to the book of Luke. Let's bring in Christ real quick. To show you that it would be through Christ these, that the covenant would be what? Reestablished for the same people. Right. So not only keep in mind, you're not going, we're not going to get the land strictly because we're Israel anymore. The most High did that the first time. You must believe in Christ to have access to the covenant. Right. Let me get it here. If you will, other way, let's read Luke one verse 68. Mm hmm. 
right? Let's read it. St. Luke 168. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he has visited and redeemed his people. He has visited and redeemed his people. So it was through Christ the covenant would come through. Why? Because our people broke the old covenant. So we needed a what? In the law, a lamb without blemish and atonement so that the Most High could now what? The Most High could now restore the same people in the future and give them access to the covenant lost. Right? Blessed be the Lord God of Israel. His name is Ahiah. Read. 69. And have raised up in horn of salvation for us. Now let's go to that horn of salvation. He raised up a horn of salvation. So, uh, so the same God who gave us the law gave us a sacrifice. Right? When you do this, you go to 168. Excuse me. And when it says horn of salvation, salvation to save. To save, right? Now I need y'all to see what it says in the Greek here. Satoria in the Greek. And it says to rescue, safety, to deliver, health, salvation, save, saving. And when you go into the Hebrew, it's Yesha, Yeshaya, our Savior. And blessed be the Lord God of Israel. He hath visited and redeemed his people through Christ, right? Mm -hmm. And have raised up in horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant, David. In the house of his servant, David. Physical people who come from who? The house of David. That's, folks, listen. That's when all the tribes were under one leadership. So Christ come to unite those same people under the same leadership. Through what? Through the scepter of David. Hand it to Christ. Read. As he have spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, which have been since the world began. Come on. That we should be saved from our enemies. That we should be what? That we should be saved from our enemies. That we should be saved from our enemies, the conspirators who have always conspired against us, including the culture vultures. Read. And from the hand of all that hate us. And from the hand of all that hate us. This is why these same people who predominantly are in position of religious control hate Christ. And in their religions, state such, be it Judaism or Islam. Islam try to minimize Christ's worth by claiming that he was just a prophet. When even in but even in the Quran, it tell you that there's no prophethood outside of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. That even Muhammad couldn't have been a, pro a, a prophet based on those requirements of prophethood. That we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of him that hate me, re hate us, read. 72. To perform the mercy promised to our fathers. To perform the mercies promised to us by our father, read. And to remember his holy covenant. And to remember his holy covenant. I need y'all to see this, folks. Christ came to substantiate and to confirm the covenant that we see in Genesis 15 for the same people. So they warned and bombing and all that over there. They're still not going to get it because the Most High didn't promise it to them. And they hate Christ because Christ made it clear that he's going to restore the covenant to the same exact people. So the Arabs have a problem with this, who are Ishmael, and so does the Vatican or the Edomites of Europe. 
And I'm speaking about the power structure of, of these two. Because it leaves them out. Read. Verse number 73. The oath which he swore to our father Abraham. Come on. That he would grant unto us. That, that he would grant unto us. That we being delivered out of the hand of our enemies might serve him without fear. With, might serve the living God without fear. Read. In holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life. All the days of our lives. Read. And thou, child, shall be called the prophet of the highest. The prophet of the highest. For thou shalt go before the face of the Lord to prepare his ways. To prepare his ways. So Christ, Christ's existence was to save his physical people from their enemies. And restore the covenant, which means land, back to the same people. But once we fell, the Gentiles came up with this whack theology, replacement theology, claiming that if you believe in Christ, now you're the chosen seed. It doesn't matter what race you are. And be like, well, okay. I'll tell you what, if that's the case, if it doesn't matter what race we are, right? If it doesn't matter what race we are, you're teaching that in Christianity. Okay, let me pull this up. If it doesn't matter what race we are, how can, let me get it here. How can you justify Upholding a people as Israel that are taking over the same territories that were promised physically to the children of Israel. I don't hear you say uh, uh, male or female, bond or free, Jew or Gentile. It doesn't matter who you are when it comes to you stating that these people ha stake, have stake, uh, uh, have a stake in this land. According to an ancient promise. You see the contradiction there? We see it all in all, over and over on this, this evil television, every Sunday in TBN, the Christian network. And yes, Lord, the war and, 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 and the Israel, we must support Israel in the war. They have fulfilled the restoration and the covenant. Hmm. Uh, hold up. How can, you, how, how can you in one sentence say, that there is no physical people, but then politically support these people fulfilling the prophecies and doing it outside of the Christ you claim to believe in as Christians. Mm -hmm. I need y'all to think about that. If Christ, if Christ is our leader who will, who will restore Israel according to your belief as a Christian, how can you get behind geopolitically the world powers uh, uh, actually, you know, creating a self-fulfilling prophecy by bombing the areas that was promised to the lost tribes of Israel. Isn't it Christ who would guide the people into the land, the Messiah? Mm -hmm. So right there, that's a conflict with modern day Christian theology. Huh? Now, contradiction. Straight contradiction. So I don't see no spiritual Israelites that you claim in taking the land who are the chosen people if they believe in Christ. And if that's so, Christians, shouldn't it be Christians getting the land over there through Christ instead of people upholding a religion, an anti-Christ religion? Mm -hmm. You see all these contradictions? Do you see all these contradictions? That's right. The old Johnny Cochran, ad, uh, Johnny Cochran adage. If it don't fit, you must acquit. Okay. If it don't fit, you must acquit. They'll say on one hand that you must be in Christ to be God's people. But you're not, you're not saying that, well, well guess what? Then the prophecies to take the land 
of these borders should belong to all Christians then. Right? Now, another lawyer. Let's show people real quick before we get back to Iran. Mm -hmm. Let's go to Matthew 10, 5 and 6 real quick. Matthew 10, 5 and 6. Let's read that. Say Matthew 10, verse 5. Read. These 12 Yeshia sent forth and commanded them, saying, Go not into the way of the Gentiles. These 12 Christ sent forth and commanded them, saying, Go not into the way of the Gentiles. And into any city of the Samaritans enter ye not. Don't go into Samaria because there were, 721, you had Babylonians and other nations going into Samaria during the split of Israel. So Christ knew that the Israelites weren't living in Samaria. He said, don't go there either. Read. But go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. I would rather you go to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. The people who don't know that they're Israelites, people that are scattered in captivity, you must tell them the curse is over. That the Most High will accept them back through, through the blood of Christ. You must go to the physical people and let them know the curse will soon end. See? How do you know this? Seven. Verse seven. And as ye go, preach saying, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And let them know that that covenant given to Abraham will soon be fulfilled as was written. When the heavenly realm, the celestial, make an appearance in this earth. That's right, folks. It will happen. Heaven is coming here to finish this. And there will be heaven on earth in that same geography. For the same people. But these people were taken down by the Gentiles. Let's emphasize that. Let's go here, Elder Lawyer Luke 21, real quick again. Mm -hmm. St. Luke chapter 21, verse 20. Read. And when you shall see Jerusalem compassed <laughs> with armies. When you shall see Jerusalem compassed with armies, folks. So before the current war, the war <clears> we <throat> see in Israel today. This was our land. And it was the Europeans, the Romans, who surrounded Jerusalem. See? And this is why we are in it and, and we're not in it, this war. Because you want us to, to take sides on either side when the land doesn't belong to either side. We were compassed by armies. And guess what? The Palestinians had a hand in shutting up the doors and the gates so that we couldn't escape. It tells us that in the book of Amos. So the Palestinians had a hand in destroying our people too. So don't think that we're here for the Palestinians either. The Most High God is making an amendment. They shut up the gates while they burned our families in Jerusalem. While they threw us in the arenas. The Palestinians, Am and Enlot, the Jordanians, these were all our cousins. We grew up together. Abraham lied. And they double-crossed us for Esau. See? And this is why, and I told people, you better get out of Jordan. You better get out of Jordan. I told our people, this whole thing you see here, at the end of the Iranian war, will be on fire and the Europeans, the same ones that went there in 1948, are going to strategically go back into different parts of Cyprus and the Isles and go back to Europe, Poland and all of that. They're going to leave this place. This will become a political sacrifice so that they can do an end around to take the land later after it's leveled through the war. They're provoking Iran because they want Iran to strike. Okay, so if you're in these areas, the plain of Jordan, guess what? Hey, I told people, y'all listen to y'all listen, listen listen to that 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 those wacky people. This whole area is going to get done in. They already started with Syria, right here. 
Syria is, is unrecognizable right now. All of this, they took Iraq. When Iran start doing it, he gonna they're going to have to just level the majority of it because Israel, with American interests and money behind it, folks, they aren't going to let up. They're going to keep on pushing because Iran is the resistance. Iran is actually funding the Middle Eastern, <coughs> uh, sustaining the Middle East because they're one of the, the oldest people who have been in the land for thousands of years. <coughs> right? And then it tell you in Edris <coughs> that after that war, then the bombs are going to start coming into America. But not, not yet though. But we're close. As you can see, the Iranian president, he ceased to make a physical occurrence declaration of war they've been in this proxy war folks for the longest but they refuse to make a declaration why because it isn't time yet but this war when it happens will be the beginning of the end of all first world powers they're, 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 they're going to bring the whole earth into a third world status under a continual police state. And they have to do it to sustain because at that point, brothers and sisters, it's not going to be false flag terrorism. Things are going to be going off for real due to these provocations. And this is what the new world order wants. They want to be able to control all the earth. But in order to do so, they must bring Iran into the war. That now it justifies a police war world, a prison world. It justifies the control of countries the way they would like, which would lead to what? That's right, folks, an electronic currency. <clears throat> right? Mm -hmm. So, Elder Lawyer, let's read it. Let's read that again. Yes, sir. St. Luke 21, verse 20. Come on. And when ye shall see Jerusalem can pass with armies... Then know that the desolation thereof is not. So guess what, folks? It was desolate before when they took away our people. That was our land. That was promised to our people. The Bantus and others ran into different parts of Africa. The people of Nigeria, the people of, of, of Togo, the Congo, Western Africa. When you look at the languages in Western Africa, it's, it's a, a lot of that, folks, is direct dialects from the Hebrew. And then you had the 10 tribes that were over here almost a thousand years before we came over. A little over a thousand years. And Christ said, well, listen, I must bring us back together again. Right? So now this was our last stand, 70 AD. Read. 21. Then let them which are in Judea flee to the mountains. We fled. Read. And let them which are in the midst of it depart out. And let not them that are in the countries enter therein too. And this is how we went into Africa and different parts of the earth back then, folks. Morocco and different areas, even Spain. We went into parts of that. We were called the Moors and all that. Read. For these I, I, no, I need you to go straight down where it talks about until the time of the Gentiles be fulfilled. Verse 24. And they shall fall by the edge of the sword. And we shall fall by the edge of the sword. It happened to our forefathers, read. And they shall be led away captive into all nations. Slaves. Arabs and Esau were behind this. Read. And Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles. So Jerusalem shall be trodden down by the Gentiles, read. Until the time of the Gentiles be fulfilled. Until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. So that means until Christ returns, there'll be Gentiles running the Middle East. Israelis aren't Israelites. The Israelites went into captivity. A matter of fact, when you look at the bloodline of those who may, may be calling themselves whatever they want to call themselves, they have history with their forefathers. 
enslaved our people. When you go into their history, a few hundred years, three, four hundred years, you'll see all these people's family had a hand in building an economy off of the blood, sweat, tears, and slavery of the children of Israel. But yet we're going to say that they are, that they were the people that went into captivity? No, they can't say that. So then how are they fulfilling the fall of Jerusalem in 70 AD when there's no history of white people putting their own people into chattel slavery? And see, they'll try to do what? They'll try to use semantics. They'll begin to use semantics. Hey, man, there have always been uh, slavery throughout all societies. If people's, everyone's enslaved someone uh, uh, in ancient history. That's a bold-faced lie. Indentured servitude or agreeable servitude isn't slavery. So you have to watch their semantics when they try to minimize the prophecies of what happened to our people. Man, they've been slavery throughout all uh, throughout all uh, ages and civilizations. Yeah, give me the history of any race of people taking a million Chinese people in slavery. Where that history at? Not no isolated. Uh, 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 anecdotal situations. Give me the history of a million Arabs being taken in captivity by another race of people. Or white people. A million white people being taken into captivity. So, so I'm going I'm to show you how they use semantics, folks. They use semantics because they switched servitude to employment. The agreement of servitude would be synonymous to you employing someone to work for a time who gets a benefit on the end of it for their family. Okay. So technically when you have a job, you are, you are a servant. So they try to look at that history and compare it to the past and say, well, no, see, there's servitude throughout all society. No, that wasn't servitude. That would be synonymous to modern day employment. Our, pe our people were made to work for free. Families separated. The whole economy built off of us. We literally built Wall Street with our own bare hands. Nothing in comparison. And don't try to come with this, oh yeah, this history of Irish people going into slave ships. Yeah, those Irish people were us. The black nobility of the UK. King James ruled three thrones at once. A black man. I'm bringing this out in the academy too, color in the Bible. He ruled the whole UK. Scotland, Ireland, and, and guess what? And the UK, England. And there was white people living in the country while he was ruling. So those black, so when you say Irish slaves, what they don't tell you is these were the black people who they took down from nobility in Ireland and threw us and threw them into the pool of the black slaves. Uh-huh, you thought the most High wasn't going, hold on. Hold on. Did they say they said some type of notice there? Yeah, I'm not sure. Okay. So I'm still good though. Okay, good, good. Mm -hmm. So let's now, now let's put it out there now. And it says what? It says, and they shall fall by the edge of the sword. And shall be led away captive into all nations. Read. And Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles until the time of the Gentiles be fulfilled. And Jerusalem shall be trodden down by the Gentiles until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. Which means the fulfillment of this prophecy is the Gentiles will rule the Middle East 
until the coming of Christ. There is no restoring of God's people before Christ restores them. Mm -hmm. There's Gentiles on either side fighting over the land. Right? Now, elder lawyer, if you will, because I want to break this down from a Christ perspective here. Let's, let's go to Romans 11 and 11 because they're out there claiming that God did away with his people to get a new people called Gentiles. Utterly ridiculous. Because what they're saying in an essence, in essence, folks, that the Most High can forgive every people outside, every, uh, all other people who are Gentiles and not forgive his own people. How ridiculous is that? And I'm going to tell you how ridiculously stupid, and I hate to use that word, their doctrine is. Where they'll come out and say, well, listen. He went to the Gentiles because the Jews rejected Christ. Liar. You're teaching to the ignorant to believe such foolishness. If all the Jews rejected Christ, then who are the disciples that set up the churches? For Christ that led to the doctrine you see today. These were all Israelites. So all Israel did not reject Christ. Another lie about that from the pits of hell from the Roman Vatican and the Roman Catholic Church from the pits of hell. How are you going to say all Jews rejected Christ when you had who? When you had even Peter from the tribe of Judah. Another lie. Romans 11, let's read it. Romans 11 and 1. Come on. I say then, have God cast away his people? God forbid. Did the Most High God cast away his people to give you another people? No. Read. For I am also an Israelite. I'm a spiritual Israelite. For I am also an Israelite. Male, female, free bond. I don't know, I don't know how they convince people with that, with, with that scripture. They're not even talking about physical Israelites. Not even talking about, in context, God's people. What it's talking about is, the most I don't care whether or not you in jail, walking free, male or female, he doesn't matter what race you are. If you do what's right, you can be blessed. It doesn't mean that I'm going to switch up, switch my people to the Gentiles. Mm -hmm. Doesn't mean that. I say then, if God cast away God's people, did the Most High do away with the Israelites like the Christian churches are claiming to get Gentiles as his people? Read. God forbid. No, read. For I am also an Israelite. I'm a what? For I am also an Israelite. Read. Of the seed of Abraham, of the tribe of Benjamin. So Paul himself is staking claim to the covenant given through Abraham. So don't try to lie and claim that the Most High done away with his people and replaced them with Gentiles. That's utterly ridiculous. How, he, how can he accept Gentiles with the foolishness they're doing in this earth unrepentant? Okay, it doesn't make any sense. Right? Now let's go down to the 11th verse. Verse 11, I say then. I say then, Paul. Have they stumbled that they should fall? Have the Israelites stumbled that we'll be on the bottom forever? God forbid. No. Read. But rather through their fall, salvation has come unto the Gentiles. Read. For to provoke them to jealousy. Now what is the salvation? Read. Now if the fall of them be the riches of the world. They go the Gentile salvation right there. They got rich. They go their salvation. When we fell, the whole world became rich and the children of Israel began to work for them. See? We became their slaves all over the earth. And this, have, this have, believe it or not, have funded the economies of the earth. China, the Middle East, the Western world. They've all become rich based on the labor of the children of Israel who's in exile under these empires right now. They became rich when our people fell. Read. And the diminishing of them, the riches of the Gentiles... How much more their fullness? How much more will we receive if we come back to the Almighty God through Christ? That's what Paul said. So don't try to claim that 
the most high have done away with his people and forgot his own people to actually, you know, accept heathens, unrepented heathens on earth who are trying to claim the law is done away with. You think God is going to accept that? A lawless people? Read. For I speak to you Gentiles, and as much as I am the apostle of the Gentiles, I magnify my office. I magnified my office. So Paul was not just speaking to Israelites. He was speaking to Gentiles who was in the church too. Knowing that the Israelites would fall, he was giving the Gentiles the conditions of which they can become a part of the church. Here's your conditions. He wasn't teaching Gentiles to replace Israelites. Okay. That's a lie. Now, the reason why the Christian church don't teach this is because now we're going to start questioning the people in authority teaching us the doctrine of Christ. What have given them the authority? They're Edomites, right? So we'll start asking, who gave you the authority? Who made you priest? And they can come with a doctrine and say, well, listen, the Israelites are done away with and we've been grafted in. So that gives us the authority to do a hack job on the Bible and teach lies that that promotes black people as a seed of ham and our people as the chosen. What type of nonsense is that? See? Let's go down here. It says, I magnify my office, Paul, if by any means I may provoke to emulation them which are my flesh. So he says, I'm going to teach you Gentiles so that when the most high begin to start blessing you, our people would become, would become jealous and say, you know what? We want our covenant back. We want our God back. We want our property back. See? Read. If by any means I may provoke to emulation them which are my flesh, it might save some of them. It might save some of them. Read. For if the casting away of them be the reconciling of the world. So if the Most High can have his own people go into captivity and now the world is reconciled where they can become rich and powerful. Read. What shall the receiving of them be but life from the dead? But it's going to be like life from the dead receiving the physical Israelites back to God. See, they don't teach this. The restoration of the children of Israel who's in exile and have been what? who have been totally destroyed by the same people who are fighting over the land today. See? It's going to be life from the dead when the Most High restore us back according to that promise shown in Genesis 15. Go on. 16. For if the first fruits be holy, the lump is also holy. If the first fruit be holy, the lump also is holy. And if the root be holy, so are the branches. The root, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. And there's 12 branches that sprung from the tree, the 12 tribes of Israel. Out of that 12 came Judah, who brought forth what? A root out of a dry ground, Christ. That means if it wasn't for a physical people, there would be no such person as a savior who physically a man who physically came through these people. So you just can't dis, you just can cannot discount the bloodline like Christians are trying to do, saying it doesn't make a difference. What are you talking about? It doesn't make a difference. If it doesn't make a difference, why don't y'all stand up and say it's wrong for these people claiming to be Israelites? That it's wrong for them to be fighting for a land that doesn't belong to them. No, you're justifying their existence by claiming some prophecy out of the Old Testament. You can't have it both ways. Read. Verse 17. And if some of the branches be broken off. And if some of the branches be broken off. And thou being a wild olive tree were grafted among them. And with them partakest of the root and fatness of the olive tree. Come on. Boast not against the branches. And Paul said, if I accept and teach you Gentiles, don't come in here boasting against the people who gave you entry into the covenant. Now, what is Paul warning the Gentiles about who's learning under the Israelites here? 
What is the boast? Read. But if thou boast, thou bearest not the root, but the root thee. Because if you're boasting, you're not boasting of your history. You're boasting their history, their covenant. Read. Thou wilt say then. Here is what Paul warned the Gentiles not to do, who's learning in the church. Thou will say then. The branches were broken off. The Israelites are done away with. That I might be grafted in. So that the Gentiles can now become God's chosen people through Christ. <laughs> the same exact thing or premise Paul was stating here not to do. The Christian church set their whole doctrine against their teacher. Paul was the one who taught the Gentiles and said, like, here's the rules. Yeah, you will have partaken of the, you can be grafted in, but guess what? You will always appreciate the people who taught you. You'll never bring forth a doctrine to claim that now these people are done away with and no one can find them. And now we're the people magically out of nowhere as Gentiles. That's the boast Paul warned them about, folks. Now, I need you to think about that. That's a people with no gratitude. No appreciation. How can you get all this, this wealth and knowledge that comes through our forefathers only to say, well, we can take all of this rich history and knowledge and understanding and say, nix the, nix the people it came from. Paul said, you can't do that. The same thing Paul told them not to do, the Christian church set their whole doctrine on. Well. Well. Because of unbelief, they were broken off. We broke, guess what? We were broken off for, di for disobeying our God and walking away from the commandments. Right? Paul said, well, listen. Our people are going into captivity here because we sinned. Right? Read. Well, because of unbelief, they were broken off. And thou standest by faith. So they don't stand by promise, folks. They stand by faith. So their lot isn't the promise. It's the faith. And following the truth of the promise, including the respect of God's people. See? They don't stand by promise. Because it was a promise wasn't given them. A covenant wasn't given them through Christ. Not that covenant of rulership and power. They received power as what? As a consequence for our people breaking the law. There was a consequence on us. And they received power on earth by default. So let me tell you. So that means even when they set up churches after our fall, they were supposed to continually teach this agreement. That yes, our God did put you Gentiles in position, but you were not to what? Boast against the natural people. You're not supposed to teach in the church that the children of Israel who are suffering in this earth are from the cursed seed of Ham. And that now your people magically have become the people. That's a boast against God's people. So Paul told the Gentiles and see, this is why a lot of Israelites out there don't want to teach Gentiles. The reason they don't want to teach Gentiles is because you say you let the Gentiles in and they'll try to run roughshod. But guess what? The promise of Christ and the oath and the doctrine of Christ is beyond what we personally feel. Mm -hmm. It don't have nothing. You can't make rules outside of, of Christ's command. So even the, the, a lot of these Israelites feel personal and say, I'm not going to teach Gentiles because they may come in and try to run roughshod and all that. 
you're not supposed to make new rules. You're supposed to teach the Gentiles anyway. But teach them what Paul taught them. Appreciate your teachers. Appreciate the covenant. That the Most High have accepted you, but you are not to now boast yourself above God's people. That's wrong. See? That's ungrateful. So a lot of these Israelites out there are teaching, they don't want to teach the Gentiles, but guess what? You're supposed to teach the Gentiles, but let them know what? Let them know the agreement. You have to let them know the agreement. Here's the agreement. Of course I can teach you. But understand the promises that comes to Israel is separate from your promise. And it's okay. Why? Because when Christ comes, what's the promise for the other Gentiles? Well, they're going to be placed in the same areas that belong to their fathers when the ark settled. So the promise for them is a land that belonged to their fathers. There's nothing wrong with that. If you're from Japheth and you're in Christ and you believe in Christ, Christ's going to make sure you're back in the land of, of Japheth. Right? <laughs> if you're from Ham and you're in Christ and you're a Gentile, Christ is going to make sure that you are back in that land that was promised to your father after Noah. See? So everyone gets what belongs to them. Everyone. So a lot of people don't even know that. Everyone gets what belongs to them. Our God is equitable and fair. But guess what? I'm going to tell you what you don't get. I'm going to tell you what you don't get. You don't get the land they're fighting for right now. Because he who rules this area rules the earth. And Christ will rule from that area. I don't care how many bombs they drop and whatever they're doing, it doesn't matter because at the end of it, Christ's going to put a foot on all of it. I'll tell you what you don't get. You don't get that. You don't get Jerusalem. That belongs to the lost tribes of Israel. Right? So it would be unfair for us to say that the Gentiles get nothing who believe in Christ. Common sense tell you what they get. The land that was promised to them in the beginning. But they must be in Christ to receive it. But you know what you won't have? You won't have kings over your land. The Israelites ambassadors will be the governors over all the earth to make sure each nation follow correctly. You will have no Chinese king. Okay. There will be no president of that land or that land. The 12 tribes of Israel will be the ambassadors of Jerusalem, of the kingdom who will rule over every part of the earth in righteousness for a thousand years, according to prophecy. So I'm putting all of this in context. All right. Now, Elder Lawyer, if you will, mm -hmm. I don't have time to go into the, uh, the dry bones. I'll deal with that later. Mm -hmm. Let's now go into Iran. Right. I need to go to the, to the scripture where it tell you their Kings or their will run into Kittim. Let's get it here. One second. I need you to get Isaiah 66 for me. Isaiah 60. Right. Mm, 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 mm. Let me show the future what's going to happen here. The Lament of Tyree. Let's go, Elder Lawyer, to Ezekiel 27. Tyree and Zidane are the Edomites who went into Israel. 
The Bible says, what do you have to do with me, O Tyre and Zidane? These are Edomites who are politically ruling in the land. And currently, they've relabeled themselves Israelis. But they're Edomites. Right? Chapter and verse, let's get it here in Ezekiel. Hold on. Old Testament. Ezekiel. Boom. Let's get it here. All right. There it is. Ezekiel 27, verse 1. All right. Ezekiel 27 and 1. Let's read it. The word of the Lord came again unto me, saying, Now thou son of man, take up a lamentation for Tyrus, and say unto Tyrus, O thou that are situated at the entry of the sea, which are a merchant of the people for many isles. Thus saith the Lord God, O Tyrus, thou hast said, I am of perfect beauty. And speak of the spirit of Satan. Read. Thy borders are in the midst of the seas. Thy builders have perfected thy beauty. Read. They have made all thy ships boards of fir trees of Sinair. They have taken cedars from Lebanon to make masks for thee. Read. Of the oaks of Bashan have they made thine oars. The company of the Asherites have made thy benches of ivory brought out of the isles of Kittim. Read. Fine linen with broidered work from Egypt, that which was that which thou spreadest forth to be thy sail. Blue and purple from the isles of Elisha was that which covered thee. Read. The inhabitants of Zidon and Arvad were thy mariners, thy wise men, O Tyrus, that were in thee, were thy pilots. Come on. The ancients of Gabal and the wise men were thereof were in thee, thy calkers, and all the ships of the sea with their mariners were in thee to occupy thy merchandise. Read. They of Persia and of Lud and of foot were in thine army. They of Persia, that's Iran, Lud and foot, which is the North Africans, were in thine army. Read. Thy men of war. Thy men of war. They hang the shield and helmet in thee and set forth thy comeliness. Read. The men of Arvad with thine army were upon the walls round about and the Gamadines, and the Gamadines were in the, towers. were in the towers. They hang their shields upon the walls round about. They have made thy beauty perfect. Tarshish was thy merchant by reason of the multitude of all kind of riches. With silver, iron, tin, and lead, they traded in thy fairs. Read. Javan, Tubal, and Meshech, they were thy merchants. They were thy merchants. What is this showing, folks? We think of Wall Street. We think of the merchants and jewelry here in the West, it's just not them. All of these nations had have an agreement with Lucifer. And the agreement is, when the Israelites fell, that he would give power to these kings of the nations if they would help the powers in dark places, not only get back out in space, but destroy the children of Israel before the times of the Gentiles. All of them are in agreement, including Iran. And I'm putting that out there because I don't want anybody to think out there that we're on the side of Iran either. They have an agreement in a secret agreement in darkness with Satan too. All nations does. So I wanted to put that out there. So I don't want no one to think that I'm pro-Iran or we're pro-Palestine or we're pro-Israel or pro-American. We're pro-prophecy. We're pro-God. Okay? There's secret agreements of the elite they've made with Satan. It tell you this right here. The prince and king of Tyrus is Satan himself. And all of them are in agreement to have their armies together at the very end to fight against Christ, including the Iranians. Including the Iranians, folks. They're all in cahoots. They've all conspired together. Read. 13. Javen, Tubal, and Meshach. Now, now you notice right here, Elder Lawyer, it says, uh, it talks <laughs> about the merchants. Because why? If you are in agreement with the, with, the, with the plan, 
then they'll allow you to trade on the open international market. But when you began to hold back and withstand the new world order, they'll create sanctions against you because now you're trying to back off the original agreement. And that's what's going on with Iran. Iran was part of the merchants who benefited from the suffering of the children of Israel in this earth. Even if it was indirectly, they benefited. But then when Esau and others say, well, here's the next level of the plan that we're going to do against God's people. And that means taking down the Middle East. Iran began to back off of the agreement and say, well, no, I, I don't, we don't want to play this game anymore. And, <laughs> and Satan and the powers that be is like, what? You don't want to play the game. So if you don't want to play the game, I must cut off the merchants. See, I'm going to have y'all understand geopolitically what happens when they put sanctions on the country It's because you have a country who's trying to go back on the international agreement against us. See against us. If you benefited financially from the market that lead to all nations getting rich, that means you must continue in helping us oppress God's people in this earth going on with the next plan. See, Iran said, no, we can't do this anymore. They say, okay, well, we have to cut off you from, from the merchant markets. We can't trade with you. We can't do this with you, but it's a domino effect. Why? Because Russia is used to getting their resources from Iran. See? <laughs> so in order for them to move forth the prophecy, they must do a regime change to take over the resources to open up the market of merchants again under the agreement we see here in Ezekiel 27. All nations, Javan, Tabal, all of them, Iran, Persia, was in agreement to set up a market that would benefit the Gentile nations while the Israelites are in captivity. See that? Y'all see that? I'm breaking it down for y'all. Right? Come on. Javan, Tubal, and Meshach, they were thy merchants. Come they on. They traded the persons of men and vessels of brass in thy market. They, it says they traded the persons of men. Human trafficking, folks. There was never a time human trafficking didn't exist. This was the benefit of of the fall of Israel for them to trade people. They traded the persons of men and vessels of brass in the market. See, all of them are complicit. See, read. 14, they of the house of Torgamah traded in thy fairs with horses and horsemen and mules. The men of Dedan were thy merchants. Many isles were the merchandise of thine hand. They brought for thee a present horns of ivory and ebony. Come on. Syria was thy merchant by reason of the multitude of the wares of thy making. They occupied in the fairs with emeralds, purple, embroidered work, and fine linen, and coral, and agate. Now, why am I going here? Because it tells you in Romans 11 chapter, by our fall, riches have gone to the Gentiles. They became merchants and began to trade all of our riches. In agreement with what? And having an allegiance against our God and God's people. They would be a part of the new world order to sustain the power they were able to get through the fall of the children of Israel. But here's a problem. In the midst of them celebrating their power and riches, God began to wake up his people. The body of the dry bones, the people, the children of Israel, all of a sudden throughout the earth started to be to understand something isn't right. And the most high began to speak to his people again under that covenant and agreement given through Christ. And now that's disturbing the, the world markets. It's one thing when you were born to believe 
or, or, or that you were made to believe that we were born to serve another people and we're less than other people. It's another thing when the chosen people begin to understand they're the chosen people. It disturbs the whole world economy when, when they, that's right, because now we realize that the economy has been running on the slaves of the Hebrews. Read 20, Judah. 17, Judah and the land of Israel, they were thy merchants. Thy trade, they traded in thy markets wheat of Mineth and Panach and honey and oil and balm. So guess what, folks? At one point, we were the ones dealing with our own trade and land and everything. And guess what happened? When we fell, who started operating in this role of Judah? Becoming merchants and setting up stores. Becoming landlords. Traded in the market. Soho and all these others trading oil, bombs and all types of different goods who began to operate in the in the role of Judah. Now, there's a lot more that I want to go into, but Elder Lawyer, let's go straight. Go to Isaiah 13 before you go there. Let's go to what will happen when Christ returns before we. OK. Matter of fact, let's go to Isaiah 13 first to give an update on this current war, where this war will lead us. Man, they did a great job today. 20, we're up, man, we're up to over 3,000 people, all, praise, all praises. So why are they fighting in this land again, brothers and sisters? Well, they're warring in the land physically, uh, to actually consolidate and get the borders back to Esau. The borders that were originally promised under the covenant given to Abraham in Genesis 15. That's why they're there. So they're trying to physically fulfill a prophecy that really belongs to our people receiving the land through Christ. They're trying to do it first, but in order to do it, they must provoke Iran, which will help them level the area as their kings begin to go into Kittim, different parts of Cyprus. Or, matter of fact, I need you to find that for me in Ezekiel, where it says they will begin to go into Cyprus or the countries. So they're going to provoke the war. So why? So when Iran began to shoot the missiles, all of this, including parts of Israel, will be leveled. While, and this will be a six million, a six million Moloch sacrifice. A future prophecy of six million. That's why we hear this six million, six million, six million. It's more so talking about the sacrifice that's going to happen here that will allow Europe to come back in to rebuild these areas. Now, they've already did what? They've already under the un, under the uh, guise of Israel or being the people of Israel, they've already begun it by since 1948, moving the Palestinians from this much land to almost nothing. See, but now the PR is against them because the world is starting to wake up and say, well, hold up, something is going on here. So now they must begin to agitate the war with Iran so that now Iran can finish it up for them. Because when Iran starts shooting missiles, they're going to do it indiscriminately. And it's going to help level a lot of these areas. But the leaders over in Israel aren't going to be there. They're going to be in they're going to be in different parts of Cyprus, which is right here. The kings, they already started moving into Cyprus, which is Kittim. And they're going to also begin to go back into different parts of Turkey, as well as Poland and the other lands they were before 1948. That's the plan. So they must agitate Iran to expedite. To expedite the destruction of these areas so that now they can have access to these borders. You got that? Now, an elder lawyer. Um, 
Let me see. See as a uh, one second, folks. Uh, no, that's not it. Let's get it. Let's get it. Let's get the one we have, Elder Lawyer, in Isaiah 66. You got it? But first, we're going to go into to, uh, to, to, uh, how this is going to lead to a war from Iran, Israel, to where it'll begin to war here in America. All right? Let's go to Isaiah 13. Let's read it, Elder Lawyer. Isaiah 13 and 1. Read the burden of Babylon, which Isaiah the son of Amos did see. Come on. Lift ye up a banner upon the high mountains. Exalt the voice unto them. Shake the hand that they may go into the gates of the nobles. Come on. I have commanded my sanctified ones. I have also called my mighty ones for mine anger, even them that rejoice in my highness. Read. The noise of a multitude in the mountains, like as of a great people. A tumultuous noise of the kingdoms of nations gathered together. The Lord of hosts mustereth the host of the battle. Come on. They come from a far country. They come from a far country. From the end of heaven, even the Lord and the weapons of his indignation to destroy the whole land. To destroy the whole land. So this war in particular will lead to the whole land being destroyed, folks. Read, how ye? How ye? Well, the day of the Lord is at hand. It is the, It shall come as a destruction from the Almighty. So the Most High is behind these wars and allowing them to happen. It's just that the narrative isn't going to pan out like Europe and the other powers believe it will. They think at the end of it, hold up, they'll be able to get the land if there's no Israelites left in the earth to claim it. See? So they're fighting on many fronts against time. They must get the area and get rid of the children of Israel throughout the earth before their time is up. Therefore, if there's no Jacob, Esau and Ishmael could now claim the, the region forever. See, that's how it's working. So this is why they're targeting our children at birth, seeking to do all types of stuff from us, to us, before we get a chance to even get our children out of these hospitals. That's why they've, they've, they've taken our blood and all that to see the strand of our, di our different blood so that they can do bioweapons and all these things. All of a sudden, a cold comes out of nowhere and our people are dropping like flies. How are you for the day of the Lord is at hand, Read. It shall come as a destruction from the Almighty. Read. Therefore shall all hands be fate and every man's heart shall melt. Come on. And they shall be afraid. Pangs and sorrow shall take hold of them. They shall be in pain as a woman that travaileth they shall be amazed one at another. Come on. Their faces shall be as flames. And it says pain as a woman that is in travail. It's speaking of Israel getting delivered through this. Because this is Jacob's trouble. We will be, we'll have to go through all these things. And as you notice, a woman would understand the closer she get to delivering a child, the worse her birth pains become. Because really, the aim is the Gentiles. Every time the Most High does something against the Gentiles as he did flooding the United Emirates, they understand our God is doing it. But because they can't fight against the spiritual, they'll now do what? They'll put legislation in place and do more laws to try to come against God's people here on earth. So the more we, the closer we get where the Most High begin to come against these nations, the more hell they'll put on our people. That's how it works. 
They can't fight against our God. So they'll turn around, like it says in Revelations, Revelation, the 12th chapter, and begin to torment the people who brought forth the man child. They can't fight God. They can't fight Christ. But we're here. So this is how they take out their vengeance against God by destroying his people. Right? By conspiring against God's people. Nine. Verse nine. Behold, the day of the Lord cometh cruel, both with wrath and fierce anger, to lay the land desolate, and he shall destroy the sinners thereof out of it. So the Most High have something out of this too. The fact that at the end of these wars and all that, and even what's going on in the Middle East, a lot of sinners have been moved in certain areas to be judged. I don't forget, even in Israel today, every year they have a rainbow parade. Now, they didn't tell us in the Christian church when we were, they were getting us to support Israel. Because we, because guess what? Every time we seen Israel on TV, and that's when media was controlled through TV and no internet, we would see rivers flowing and doves flying and Jerusalem and violins playing. And, and it made us believe they were going into Israel to bring forth a righteous political agenda that, for Christ. Support Israel, God's chosen people. Violence playing and the rivers are going. And next thing you know, we look up and there's a there's a rainbow parade in Israel now. Behold, the day of the Lord cometh cruel, both with wrath and fierce anger, to lay the to lay the land desolate, and he shall destroy the sinners thereof out of it. So the most I have a plan in this. And he's going to get rid of those this sinful these sinful communities who have destroyed the earth. Read. Verse 10. For all the stars of heaven and the constellations thereof shall not give her their light. The sun shall be darkened and is going forth. And speaking of when Christ returns, read. And the moon shall not cause her light to shine. Read. And I will punish the world for their evil and the wicked for their iniquity. And I will cause the arrogancy of the proud to cease and will lay low the haughtiness of the terrible. Read. Verse number 12. I will make a man more precious than fine gold, even a man than the golden wedge of Ophir. Why it says a man like pure gold? That means rare. To find a man after the war fallout will be a rare commodity in the earth because gold is more rare than any other metal. There will be through the war, there will be more women left in the earth than men. Read verse 12 or verse. 13. I need you to go straight to um, where it talks about the Medes. Yes, sir. Verse number 16. Matter of fact, read it, read it all the way through. Read. Yes, sir. Uh, 13. Therefore, I will shake the heavens and the earth shall move out of her place and the wrath of the Lord of hosts and in the day of his fierce anger. Read. And it shall be as a chaste row and as a sheep that no man taketh up, that they shall every man turn to his own people. Every man shall turn to his own people, read. And flee everyone into his own land. So guess what? When the economy starts breaking down due to this, these wars, all of these people that are going, traveling all over the earth, they're going to go back into their original countries they were born out of. And when you start seeing stores shut down and everybody going into their own lands and they, they going back to their lands permanently, understand that that's going to be the end of travel altogether. That if you're going to be on a plane or be on a ship or be on something moving, it's going to happen when you see all the merchants begin to go back into their lands. What's going on right here? The embassies have contacted their citizens and told them, there is no more business there. Come back home. Come back home because something bigger is about to, greater is about to go down that will not allow you back. At that time, that's when the children of Israel who understand what's going on will begin to make their way into certain areas that the Bible speaks of. 
understand it. But if you are within these borders, right here, Jordan, parts of Iraq, where Babylon was, Syria, Lebanon, and Israel, and parts of, not always Cairo, but a part of Cairo, will be due to the nuclear fallout. And what they're going to do is they're going to have what? They're going to have a dam built. This dam will be built in Ethiopia that will dry up the Nile River. If you don't believe me, look at it right now. Israel have been negotiating for over a decade a dam to stop the rivers of Ethiopia running into the Nile. And don't forget, there's a prophecy where it tells us the Nile shall dry up and we're seeing it right now as we speak. Right? Come on. 15. Everyone that is found in that is found shall be thrust through and everyone that is joined unto them shall fall by the sword. Read. Their children also shall be dashed to pieces before their eyes. Their houses shall be spoiled and their wives ravished. Now, I know some people out there talking about this is what's going to happen when Christ return. This not talking about that. OK, there's no way in Christ's kingdom where he'll have people breaking the law and, 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 and ravishing women and all that. That's unlawful. This is speaking of when the armies begin to go into these countries like America and all of that. That's what's going to happen. A lot of these armies are going to be taking women, dealing with women, trafficking women, killing the men. And who, who is the most high stirring up? Read. 17. Behold. I will stir up the meads. I will stir up the what? I will stir up the meads. Now we went into the, the, the beginning to show you that the meads have been there. Since Noah's Ark settled and where Japheth was able to actually, you know, get their particular land masses. The meads are from Japheth. They're in the center parts where the capital is right now of Iran. Speaking of the Iranians, you have the you have Elam there on the right or, or the southern parts at the bottom, nor the middle, and then you have who? At, up at the top near the capital, the Medes, the Persian Medo Empire. So at the very end, the Most High is going to stir up Iran. That's where we are now, which is the beginning of the end of this empire. The Most High began to stir up the Persians. Read. Behold, I will stir up the Medes against them. Read. Which shall not regard silver, and as for gold, they shall not delight in it. You're not going to be able to bribe them into the New World Order. The Most High is not going to allow them. This is why they don't care if they're sanctioned or whatever. The Most High says, I prepared these, this nation at the very end before the coming of Christ. And this is the nation, Israel, really proxy Israel, but it's America is stirring up so that they can level the area so that Europe can do an end around and get the, get the land later. Now understand this, folks. This is intentional because the EU has their hand all on this because then all the blame is going to fall on America, Revelation 17, and once America has lost its power in respect throughout the earth, all power goes back to Europe. Ten horns for the space of one hour, which is the last seven years of the Jubilee. Huh? Behold, I will stir up the means against them which shall not regard silver and its gold. Because don't forget, they've been trying to negotiate with Iran to come under the order and yet Iran refused. See? It's prophecy. Read. Their bows also also shall dash the young men to pieces. What's the bows, folks? Missiles. Read. 
and they shall have no pity on the fruit of the womb. Read. Their eyes shall not spare children. Their eyes shall not spare children. This is the war. This is the army of Iran. And if you, if you hear what they are saying religiously, they believe since the beginning that they were born to bring in what they call, according to their religious beliefs, the 13th Imam. The 13th Imam. They believe they were preserved since the ancient times for this war to bring in the king that brings peace to earth. It's a part of their religion. Now, on one side, they're with the merchants and all that and agree with them. I tell you that in the book of Psalms 83. But on the other hand, they have a different type of Islam. Their Islam states that they believe that their army will be used by God to bring in the Savior. The 13th Imam, they call him. Right? Right? Right, the Iranians, they're Shiites, whereas others, yeah. other parts of the Middle East are primarily Sunni. But exactly, they're, Shiite they're Shiites. The majority is Sunni, but they're Shiites. The water, Elder. Mm -hmm. And it's within the Shiites that they believe in that, that prophecy the, of the 13th uh, Imam. The 13th Imam, exactly. Thank you, Elder Lloyd. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Moving on, it says here. In and Babylon. Yes, sir. Verse 19. And Babylon, the glory of kingdoms, the beauty of the Chaldees' excell excellency shall be as when God overthrew Sodom and Gomorrah. Read that again. And Babylon, the glory of kingdoms, the beauty of the Chaldees' excellency shall be as when God overthrew Sodom and Gomorrah. As when God overthrew Sodom and Gomorrah. Now I'm going to say this and I'm going to say this good. And I'm only going to, guess what? I'm going to say it. I'm going to leave it out there. You can be within these borders right here if you want during this war. If you're anywhere in the, in the areas that were promised to Abraham, all of this will be hit. All, every last bit of it. Parts of Cairo are going to be thrown down. Jordan, parts of Jordan in the living areas are going to be thrown down. Iraq is going to be thrown down. Syria is already unrecognizable. Palestine is going to be thrown down. If you're in any of these particular areas, you better get out as soon as possible. You better get out as soon as possible. Possible, because I'm gonna tell you what's gonna go down when the internet and all that stuff happens and those and those bombs hit. They're gonna be hunting people in the dark, in the cover of no technology, who looks like us in these regions. I'm gonna tell you that right now. Let's get uh, Elder Lawyer, Ezekiel 20 and 33. Ezekiel 20 and 33. Hold on, let's get it. Now, upon all this that's happening, eventually the Most High going to have us in certain areas. Right? I want to show you all this real quick. And I'll, I'll go into this as we get closer to the end of this. Right? As y'all can see, brothers and sisters, even in the map here, right? I want y'all to see this. I don't know if y'all can notice in parts of Egypt, right? We're actually going to be on this side eventually. Let me show you. Where the 12 pillars are today. Where the Red Sea is. We're going to be in this area if you can see it. Eventually, we're going to be around here. If you can see, let me go it up here. Yeah. 
right here where the Red Sea is. There's going to be highways left for us to be over here where the big mount is. And if you notice, even though the Most High is going to have part of Cairo starving and all that, you got your mm, I'm, good. I'm good. Right? He's going to preserve parts of Goshen on this side of Egypt. He's going to preserve parts of Goshen off of the Mediterranean. He's going to also preserve parts of Kittim when you go up here, Kittim and some of the isles of Greece. He's going to preserve Goshen off of the Mediterranean and all of these areas you see on Mediterranean are going to be preserved with good food to feed the elect who are left after the, after the fallout. Right? Let's go to Ezekiel 20 and 33. Now I'm being guarded to some degree, right? On specific scenarios. And I'm going to tell you why I have to be guarded. One thing I found out by learning and doing this work, if we put out certain things beforehand, you have certain people who try to get in front of us to foil things before we have an opportunity to actually sustain something. Okay. If we went into certain specifics when it comes to geography and plans and things of that nature, according to what the most I've shown us, you have people who will go before us to mess it up where, you know, we can't even go into these areas because they'll go and do something that would actually destroy an opportunity. So I have to be guarded under certain circumstances because I understand now through experience how some of our people operate, which, which isn't right. But stay tuned. As we get it and where we are, as we go through the spirit of the Almighty, I guarantee you it, it'll all be divulged. Right? Oh, the lawyer, if you may, let's, because we have to end this out. Let's go to Ezekiel 20. Mm -hmm. And 33, because I need to go right back to Christ, right? Mm -hmm. Isaiah 20 and 33. Yes, sir. Ezekiel 20 and 33. Oh, and, and what does this say? And I'm going to show you all, folks. Ezekiel 20 and 33 is what? It tell you in the Bible, the Lord will restore Israel. Mm -hmm. So the, the there was no restoration of Israel in 1948. Mm -hmm. This is a war amongst the Gentiles that's going to cleanse the region before Christ's return. Even the Edomites in Israel are going to leave that area eventually and go back to Europe. Hold on, let me see if I can find that before you read that other lawyer. Mm I'll find it. Let me see. Okay, I think this is it. Hold on. One second, folks. Stick with me. Thirteen and oh, we already did that. We're going going to their own land, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we got that. All right, let's get it. Let's read Ezekiel twenty and thirty-three. So, 
excuse me, folks. I just want to see if I can find some. I'm, it's, you know, right now it's past me, but I bet you as soon as it's done, it's going to pop into me. Don't worry about it. I'll give it to y'all later. But anyway, there were, there was no, there was no restoration of the children of Israel in 1948. That didn't happen. That was a political move to bring forth the prophecies that we're reading today, where all of these nations would be warned for the chosen area at the very end which destabilizes the Middle East, which is intentional for the European powers so that now they can now bring Iran in because what Iran can do is finish up the areas to finish up these areas and to level these areas where the blame will now go on them outside of it being blamed on the state of Israel. But they need to level these places without getting the negative blowback politically by bringing Iran in the war it's helping what they're trying to do to bring in the new world order and have what Rome rule the earth, the 10 horns for the last seven years before the return of Christ. Okay. Now, now, and even though I said the last seven years is time they're given, but even Christ said, that he's going to cut that time short. So no man know the day or the hour. But we're talking about the seven years that was allotted for the last Jubilee given to the most given to the Gentiles. Okay. When it comes to that time, time and a dividing of times. Ezekiel 20 and 33, read it. Yes, sir. As I live, saith the Lord God, surely with a mighty hand and with a stretched out arm and with fury poured out, will I rule over you. Will I rule over you? Read. That means while all this is happening, read. And I will bring you out from the people. He says he will bring us out from the people. Not the UN. Not the Belfort Declaration. See? I will bring you out from, from the people. Read. And will gather you out of the countries wherein you are scattered. We were scattered according to a curse. Deuteronomy 28, 64. Deuteronomy 28 and 68 slave ships. And also when Christ says we shall be led away captive into all nations. Well, it's going to be that Christ who will gather us. Read. With a mighty hand and with a stretched out arm and with fury poured out. Read. And I will bring you into the wilderness of the people. The wilderness of the people is going to be at that same Mount Sinai. Some of us will already be located proximity there. And some of us will be moved through portals in the earth where the angels will take certain ones in their present state and move them through a gate. Read verse number 35. And I will bring you into the wilderness of the people. I will bring you where? Into the wilderness of the people. I will bring you into the wilderness of the people. The wilderness we were in before during the time of Moses, where the 12 pillars are. Read. And there will I plead with you face to face. Read. Like as I pleaded with your fathers in the wilderness of the land of Egypt. So will I plead with you, saith the Lord God. Come on. And I will cause you to pass under the rod. That means we'll be under the law. No grace. So if we break the law in the wilderness, instant judgment. The Bible even tells us in the book of Isaiah, in different parts of the Old Testament, that it's going to be some of our people going into the bushes, getting mouses and stuff and rats and stuff and cooking rodents. And that you're going to find them. They're going to be dropping dead. And going, they're going to be dragging and burying these people. They're going to be eating rats and all that. And rabbits and all types of stuff in the bushes. And it tell you, the Most High said that he's going to just have them fall dead. Okay. There's no, there's no going to be praying over some a pork chop in the wilderness. Okay. Read. 38. And I will purge out from among you the rebels... And then that transgress against me, I will bring them forth out of the country where they sojourn, and they shall not enter into the land of Israel. And they shall not enter into the land of Israel. What do we read in the biblical prophetic process of how Israelites get back the covenant land? 
Here, did any of this happen in 1948? Any of this? Did you have some people who was in the wilderness of Moses first and getting purged in the wilderness so that these who are left would be worthy of a land prepared for them by Christ? None of this happened. None of this. We, we received a, a, a narrative by Tom Warner. Time Warner uh, publishing groups. They shaped the narrative of all this and Hollywood and all of that to have us believe that this was some prophetic restoration when all of the process of a, peop a covenant people receiving the land is actually written in the Bible. This has nothing to do with one European nation fighting its own citizens. Or joining countries and all that amongst Europeans. Or European spat that would lead to the restoration. Where is that? Make that make sense. And I will purge out from among you the rebels. Read. And them that transgress against me. Read. I will bring them forth out of the country where they sojourn. Read. And they shall not enter into the land of Israel. And ye shall know that I am the Lord. And ye shall know that I am the Lord. Now, I wanted to come in early and let you know that yes, this will be the war eventually to end all wars. But there's a reason why Iran isn't making a public declaration of war against the United States as of now. As of now. So that means there is time. There is time. So what you must look at here is what? Eventually there, there could be a negotiation where they'll agree to at least when Iran and Israel a ceasefire. If they declare a ceasefire, especially in a political year, where now people are coming against Biden administration, or those who really run in the White House. But all in all, Israel, an extension of America, has cleared out a lot of the areas they wanted anyway. So eventually, they could have a ceasefire but still continuing the proxy war until Iran's back is finally at the wall. And if you hear Iran in the future say there's a declaration of war, understand where we are. I'm gonna tell you what's gonna happen well in advance. You can look at the day's date, you can stamp it April 20th. When there's a declarations of war, you're going to see a lot of these shops set up all over in the Western world, the merchants, and they're going to be told by their embassies, you better come back to your country now. And they're going to be told, make sure that if you have sons who are at a serviceable age, that they're going to have to join into the armies also because it's on. I'm telling you how it's going to go down. Right now, don't panic. Keep your eye on the prophecies. But no, Iran is the, is the war. It's the beginning of the end of Esau's rule when it happens. Why? Because the missiles will stop there in the region and they're going to come over into certain parts of the United States. But we have time. Don't panic. And above all, do not run into a burning house. I'm going to say it again. 
If you're in any of these areas, if you run into it, you get what you get running into a burning house. Allow these people to fight it out because you know, according to prophecy, who gets the land at the end anyway. Y'all got it? Hebrew and Bible Academy tomorrow. Making it through Jacob's trouble. Folks, and I'll tell you, we're so close to the end. You don't want to be anywhere else. Come on through. Go to historytimes.org. Identifying the Gentile nations, final battle between Esau and Jacob. Identifying the cult within Christianity. The truth about Mecca, the satanic rituals at the Kaaba stone. How Christ will guide us through Jacob's trouble. And what I'm going to do is, I'm going to ask lawyer also. We're going to take all of our interactions, warfare and all that in the Old Testament between H, Jacob and Esau. And the book of Jasher. All the battles we had there between Jacob and Esau. All the way up to the Christ where Esau was trying to go against him there. And then what I'm going to do is show you where Christ says, I know thy works and tribulations and poverty. And I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews and are not, but are the synagogue of Satan. I'm going to also go into at the very end, my Dead Sea Scrolls to show you the final battle led by Christ in the desert that was prophesied. You don't want to miss the final battle between Jacob and Esau. Okay, we're going to break down the seven trumps in the book of Revelation. That class shouldn't last long at all. And because that's a short class, I'll be able to open up the Zoom and interact with you brothers and sisters. And we're going to talk about the dark side of Islam. How they actually interact with jinns or genies, demons. Okay. Oh, yeah, they get a few wishes fulfilled. But I'll tell you what. <laughs> Hell be breaking out in their, in their homes from it. With that, I'm going to say shalom. May the most high be with you. Stay prayed up. Sin not. Elder Lawyer, thank you all for being here. Yes, sir. It's good to have you back, young man. It's good to be back. Okay, yes, yeah, sir. I know it is. <laughs> that travel is something else, boy, on them planes, boy. Mm -hmm. But I tell you, keep in mind, oh, I can't wait for the academy tomorrow. I'm, listen, I'm coming in with some energy tomorrow. I'm going to tell you that right now. I'm ready to go. When I see these things happen geopolitically, I'm like, you know, what excites me, brothers and sisters, is the fact that we're this close. The fact that the Most High have showed us this years ago and to see prophecy unfold right before our eyes. Folks, brothers and sisters, I'm a spectator just like you in this thing. And for me to see what I've read throughout the years come into fruition, no one can tell me that there's any book like our book, the Bible. <laughs> and keep in mind, the Most High is calling back Israel. Stay prayed up, sin not. We will soon see Zion. Oh, yeah, it's going to be a good day tomorrow. Shalom. Shalom. Historytimes.org. HistoryTimes.org The East is where we're from The 12 tribes of Israel In 721 BC The Assyrian king He took us down We fell with the great escape, we went through the Euphrates. The Lord held the water still to a land where no mankind dwelt. We went the twelve tribes of Israel. That's who we be, we be Manasseh, the Cubans, Ephraim from Puerto Rico, and Bali from the Isles of Hawaii. Lord is calling back his right now. Yeah. Zebulon from Panama, Cat, the North American Indians, Simeon, the Dominicans. Our highest gathering is right now. Yeah. The Arab.
Arabs and Africans told us. 